Aloha, it's Robert Stelic with Blue Planet Surf. Today's video is going to be all about the new Wingmaster board. We just got our first shipment and we have them in stock now. And you know, looking back at 2020, it's been such a crazy year. The one thing that's kept me and many of my friends sane this year was wing foiling. You know, it's been an incredible progression in equipment, rider skills, just over the last year and a half or so since the sport's been around. Uh, it's just amazing to see so much improvement across the board. It's really impressive to see a lot of the young guys really pushing the sport, pulling off these crazy new moves, and even older guys like myself and many of my friends got into the sport and are progressing quickly. So it's a really, really fun sport. If you haven't tried it, you owe it to yourself. So the Wingmaster board's been in development for about a year, been going through a lot of different prototypes, doing lots of testing. This is the culmination of the board that I wanted for myself. Uh, the ideal wing foiling board designed specifically for wing foiling. And then I'm gonna talk about the features, what's included with the board, uh, the construction, the colors available, the sizes and specs, as well as how to get one, the pricing and so on. So stick around. First of all, let's talk about the shape of the board and I'll give you a little bit of history about how I came up with this shape. So I've been wing foiling a little over a year and a half now and uh, I first started on a Carver foil board which is one of our stand-up foil boards which was good to learn on and then very quickly I wanted to move to smaller, shorter boards. I found that little, having a little bit more volume really helped me get, get it going especially if the wind is lighter. In stronger winds I can use a smaller lower volume board but as a good all-round board, I, I wanted to have something that floats me, but is as short as possible. So that's kind of the philosophy behind the shape. Now, I've had a prototype here for a couple of months that I've been using and testing, and, but we just got our first shipment of these Wingmaster boards. I'm really excited. They came out really beautiful, and we got three different sizes available. So the shape, as you can see, the outline is really kind of egg-shaped. So the, the shape of the board is very rounded and I found that for wing foiling the tracking is not as important as uh, on a stand-up foil board where you want it to really track straight to make it easier to paddle straight. On the wing foil board you got the power of the wing pulling you forward so it's not as critical for the board to go straight and having a little bit narrower tail and nose uh, keeps it from like catching the water. It allows you to kind of go closer to the pocket, closer to the water, and it just um, makes the board more loose and maneuverable, having a little bit less uh, a narrower tail and nose. Now you'll notice that the bottom shape on my board, it doesn't really have a lot of sharp edges. It's, it has a little bit of a rail back here, but it's pretty rounded. I know that many other shapes out there have like concaves and hard edges and a lot of um, planing features that are designed to give the board a lot of lift. Uh, but what I found really in wing foiling is that most of the takeoffs especially happen at fairly low speed. So the speed of the takeoff is really before you start to plane. So even having all those hard rails that are supposed to get the board on top of the water don't have that much effect because you're already lifting off the water as you're, as you're speeding up and the foil grabs the water basically. So my philosophy was to make the board forgiving, like if you come down from a jump or, or a breach or something like that, having that rounded boofy nose gives you like a nice forgiving entry into the water and then um, having you know, a little bit more rounded edges. Also, if you touch down, it just doesn't give you any funky stuff. Like, it, it, it just um, fairly neutral when you hit the water. So that, that's kind of my philosophy about the, about the rounded shape. And so when you're taking off, what, what I'm doing is I wait for a little bit of pressure in the wing and having the volume really helps because it, I'm already at the surface of the water. Even when there's not much wind, when I wait for a little gust, when the gust hits, I just pump the wing a couple times and that gives me enough speed to just get up on the foil. And that happens at fairly low speeds, actually way below planing speeds, I think. So you'll also see that like, the rocker line um, of the side of the board is quite rounded. You know, the, the middle here is pretty flat, 
but on the rails it has a lot of curve. And I also find that is also really helpful because it allows you to kind of pop the foil up, kind of it lets you kind of bump, 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 and then get up on the foil. So, so having that curved rail, I find really helpful. I know some have just like a cut off tail and it doesn't have a lot of curve in the rail, which I think makes it a little bit harder to do that pumping motion. But yeah, and then it does have a little bit of that kick tail, the chisel kick tail. Um, that just allows you to get closer to the water without touching the tail and slowing down. So really, ideally, you want to be off the water the whole time, never touch the water. So I just try to kind of minimize the chances of the board touching the water or, or creating drag, especially in the tail. The nose, I call it the boofy nose, is really rounded. So that helps um, at lower speeds, um, you know, creating less drag at lower speeds and also being more forgiving if you touch down. So another thing about the shape that I find important is the how easily it releases off the water. So, and this is something I heard Dave Kalama talk about as well. If you have a concave shape, it kind of tends to stick to the water and a convex shape uh, allows the water to release more easily. So when you're lifting off the water with and getting onto the foil, less water will stick to the board and kind of run off easier. And you can test this concept yourself by putting a bowl in the sink of water and then pulling it upside down. You'll notice the surface tension of the water will hold that bowl against the surface. It'll be harder to release and that's like a concave shape. That's similar to what a concave does. If you have a convex shape or you hold the bowl the other way around, it'll be much easier to pull it out of the water and the water will come off easier. Okay, so let's talk about the deck a little bit. I think the bottom is definitely the most important part of the uh, shape, but also the volume distribution is important. So you'll see um, the volume is definitely concentrated more in the middle and back of the board. So the idea is to be able to stand in your takeoff position right over the foil when you're still on the water. So that with the um, volume exactly balanced and then being able to just pop up on the foil in the, in the right position. So no, you don't have to move your feet around. Personally, I like having a flat deck. So the front uh, deck is pretty flat. I just find it easier to get on and off the board and just uh, move around and so on. The back foot placement, you'll notice has a arch bar. So that gives you a nice tactile feel for where your back foot needs to go. It's right, kind of the arch bar is centered right over where you would usually put your mast. So it's easy to feel where your back foot is in relation to the mast. And then it also has a slight concave shape in the, in the back here where your back foot goes. So I found that this tail shape with the slight concave is a nice compromise between maximum volume that keeps you on top of the water, still having a little bit of a curved rail, and also being feeling more connected to your foil by keeping the tail from being too thick. Okay, next let's talk about the features of the board. One of my favorite features is the subgrip handle. The Blue Planet subgrip handle makes it really easy to handle the board, lift it straight up on the side. Uh, it gives you nice grip, has that rubber grip on the inside. There's a vent plug inside the handle so you don't have to have a separate in vent plug installation. I find having a handle on the deck is enough. If you think we need a handle on the bottom as well, let me know. We can do that in the future. I just like to have a nice smooth bottom, so that's why I haven't put a handle on the bottom at this point, but it's something that we could possibly add in the future. So in regards to inserts, another really important feature is our foil strong box. In the back of the board, this is also a patented product we developed. It's basically a block of high density foam with a carbon stringer down the middle. Uh, it combines a Tuttle box in the center and then two US boxes on the sides for the plate mount. It's all one piece, super strong construction. Uh, this, this makes the board bulletproof and especially the connection between the foil and the board, I found a super important. It's very stiff, strong connection. There's no flex and that translates into higher performance and it's very strong. So that translates into less damaged boards. Another great feature of the Wingmaster board is all the foot strap inserts. So a lot of people are using their boards uh, in a set stance, not moving their feet, kind of like on my board, I just have a front strap and a back strap. But of course, this board also has the option to mount two straps in the front, and then uh, the, the back foot can be offset to either side or centered. So there's a lot of different mounting options here. So you can set it up with three straps or two straps, 
offset to the side or centered, and, and there's, so there's many different options for the foot straps. On the deck pad, we left off the tail kick. On our surfboards, we always have a tail kick, but I found for wing foiling, it's nice to be able to move the foot further back or further forward, and, and you're not really using the, the tail kick that much. So we just left it off so it doesn't get in the way of your foot straps and so on. If you want to mount the foot strap way in the back, sometimes the tail kick would be in the way. So we just got rid of the tail kick and had a flat tail. But like I said, we do have that little arch bar. The, the boards have really nice traction. It has this little micro dock texture on the pad, which makes it real grippy, even when it's wet. It also keeps the pad from absorbing a lot of moisture and gaining weight when it's in the water. And we have the pad all the way to the nose. These boards are so short, and when you're riding without straps, you can move your feet all over the place. So it's nice to have the deck pad all the way to the front, um, not just like two thirds of the board. So another nice feature is the, this board has an FCS plug, so you can mount a GoPro camera right there on the nose and get some good shots while you're riding. Next, I'm gonna talk about the construction of the board. We basically have two options. One is a hybrid construction using epoxy, bamboo, carbon, and Kevlar, and the other one is a full carbon construction, which is also reinforced with Kevlar and extra carbon. So the hybrid bamboo construction boards have a carbon fiber deck reinforcement so it covers the standing area in the front foot where you're jumping, kneeling, landing. So this makes this area much stronger. A lot of times this is a weak spot on boards. You know, there's always a compromise between weight and strength. And I always like to make the boards a little bit stronger. I'm hard on my gears. These boards also have Kevlar rails. So there's a band of Kevlar that runs all the way around the board, nose, tail, and rails. And these boards also have a sheet of bamboo veneer sandwiched between fiberglass, bamboo, and more fiberglass on top. So it's a vacuum bag sandwich of bamboo and fiberglass. So this construction gives you a really nice strength to weight ratio. These boards are high performance but strong and durable. The carbon construction has the same construction features including a Kevlar band that runs all the way around the board and then extra carbon patch on the deck. And, but then everything else is carbon fiber, so it replaces the fiberglass with carbon, which is stronger at the same weight. So these boards are slightly lighter than the bamboo boards and stronger. So, uh, but because carbon fiber is more expensive, of course, they're a little bit more pricey. Our Wingmaster boards have a wood stringer down the center line of the board, and the handle is slightly offset, so the vent plug is centered over the stringer of the board. That way it allows the board to vent both halves of the foam uh, through the vent plug, which is important. The center stringer of the board also connects to this carbon fiber stringer inside the foil strong box. So that gives you a really nice direct transfer of power when you're pumping or pushing on, on your foil. It directly translates the energy to your foil. Okay, so one thing I wanted to mention in terms of who this board is made for, is uh, you know the Wingmaster board is definitely a purebred wing foiling board. That's what it was designed for, and it's really designed for someone who already has a little bit of wing foiling experience. So if you're just getting into wing foiling, I would recommend a bigger board, maybe a seven six or six eleven easy foiler would be a good choice. Um, but that said, if you already have some foiling experience, you're a good foiler already, or you have windsurfing background and, and any kind of good water sports background and you're a fast learner, I've definitely seen people pick up the sport with, on much smaller board. So it is possible to learn wing foiling on the Wingmaster, but I recommend for a beginner that has no foiling experience, definitely starting on a bigger, more stable, uh, wider platform. Okay, so we have three different sizes available on this board and I, the main number I would look at when you're choosing one of these boards is the volume. Ideally, in my opinion, I recommend using a board that's at least about the same volume as your body weight. So uh, if you have your weight in pounds divided by 2.2 will give you your weight in kilograms. For me, it's about 90 kilograms. So I like using a board around 90 liters, which is the 410 has 89 liters that's ideal for me it floats me keeps me on the surface makes it easy to launch when the wind is light when the wind's stronger i can also use the 4.6 which is also a really fun board it's a little bit more compact so it feels really good and has less volume at 78 liters it's still enough for me to stay on the surface with a little bit of pull from the wing 
The 5.3 has the most volume at 105 liters, and so that one's good for a little bit heavier riders. So the main number I would look at is the volume. Now, sometimes people ask us, are these also good for stand-up foiling? And I would say that for most people, these are gonna to be too small for stand-up foiling, but for a smaller skilled rider with good balance, you can definitely stand up foil on these boards, but it's gonna be pretty tippy, and also the tracking is not very good, so you have to kind of adjust your stroke technique to make up for that yawing motion. But it is possible to stand up foil on these boards if you have the skills. But ideally, you would wanna use a board that's smaller than a stand-up foil board for wing foiling just because you have that lift up from the wing that can get you up a little bit easier and just having that shorter compact length really makes a difference on the water when you're jumping just rotations turning and so on getting in the pocket on a wave it just the the foil feel you have on the shorter board is just much better um, the shorter especially the length wise the shorter you can make the board the the more maneuverable it becomes so in terms of colors available, we currently have three different options. We have the carbon in white and blue, we have the bamboo in teal and white, and then we have the bamboo in blue and white. Those are the three color options we have. We'll have them up on our website shortly. I'll put the link down in the description below as soon as they're posted on our website. Okay, in terms of pricing, our bamboo construction uh, varies from $12.49 to $12.99. The carbon construction is $15.49 to $15.99, depending on the size. And that price includes a $100 shipping allowance. So we'll ship it for free in the US. And if you're international, we'll pay the first $100 of the shipping cost. We can ship it anywhere in the world. And also, of course, if you buy it in our shop, we can apply that shipping allowance towards the purchase of the board. So we'll give you a discount. Unfortunately, the board bags did not make it in time to ship with these boards. So we're getting board bags for these boards by the end of January. Um, so if you wanted to get a board bag later, that's an option. But right now, the price includes the board only. Another question that we get asked a lot is the weight of our boards. And I just uh, weighed some of these and they vary between 14 pounds and 18 pounds depending on the construction and the size. We like to weigh each board individually um, so if you call our shop, we can weigh the board for you and get, give you an exact weight. Sometimes we make adjustments to the construction or we want, you know, we want to add a reinforcement or something or we add or take out inserts. So sometimes the weights can vary a little bit and that's why we don't like to post them on our website. There's just always a little bit of 5 to 10% variation even within the same model and size. So our boards aren't the lightest, but they are very strong and durable. And to me, that's the most important thing. I mean, the weight is important but the performance and the strength of the board and holding up over time to me is super important. That's why we decided to make these boards a little bit stronger, add all the inserts needed so you don't have to add inserts later and um, put everything in one nice package that's gonna hold up and last you for years. Another thing I wanted to mention really quickly is the new PPC wing from New Zealand. I'm loving this wing. I just got my first sample and I liked it so much that I ordered 100 of them. We're going to be the exclusive distributors in the US and we're going to have those available sometime in February of 2021. So stay tuned for the PPC wing. That's going to be available soon. We also have the Duotone wings. We have the Ozone wings and the Armstrong wings. So those are available as well. And if you buy them as a package, if you buy a board, a foil, and a wing together, we'll give you a great package deal. You get $100 off the foil if you buy it with the board. And if you also buy a wing as a package, you get $50 off the wing. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Please give us a thumbs up. I hope it answered all your questions that you had. Please subscribe to the Blue Planet Surf YouTube channel down below and we'll see you on the water. Aloha.